a Conservative Party luncheon at Sherwood near Nottingham. Anyway, let's have a drink. The Tory ladies of Nottingham are concerned today about the level of social security benefits for Britain's three million unemployed. I think the level of welfare benefits is slightly too high at the present time. You know, some of the people who say they're unemployed, bless their hearts, really and truly prefer the unemployment than to take a job. I feel if they put them up, there will be people who will take advantage and will therefore not go out to work, they will sit at home quite happily, be quite content with what they've got and just idle the way at home. They were concentrating more. The same fear concerns today's guest speaker, Conservative MP Matthew Paris, who formerly worked in Mrs Thatcher's private office. He's a strong supporter of Tory policy towards the unemployed. We must never make it so comfortable for people to throw themselves upon the state or to be helped by the state that they lose any incentive or much incentive to try and get themselves out of those difficulties by their own efforts. We don't want unemployment benefit to be so generous that it is more generous than the lowest paid jobs. Social security benefits in Britain are lower than in 15 major Western countries and are at their lowest relative to earnings for 30 years. But Mr. Paris believes they're high enough. But it is not actually easy for a single man to manage on unemployment benefit or on supplementary benefit. It is not easy, but I believe that it is possible, and I think that is just about the right level, that's just about the mark at which the state should pitch. Wilden Action challenged Member of Parliament Matthew Paris to prove the Conservative claim that supplementary benefit is enough to live on. We brought him to Newcastle upon Tyne for a taste of life on the dole, and to find out whether he could or could not pay for his food, clothing, heating and leisure out of the single person's allowance for one week, 26 pounds and 80 pence. We put Mr. Paris in the upper flat of a house in Scotswood, in a neighborhood where eight out of 10 men are looking for work. His rent and rates would be paid for by the social security, but everything else he spends must come out of 26 pounds 80. Of course, I realize that a week is nothing like six months or a year, and there are all kinds of problems, psychological problems, that would occur after a year that wouldn't after just a week. A week was as much as I could do, so a week it is, and, and I think it's going to be very valuable. Mr. Paris handed us his wallet and credit cards and went to the post office to join the queue of people waiting for welfare benefits. His week on the dole will at least be realistic financially, as we deduct money to cover costs which wouldn't arise in a single week. After queuing for 45 minutes, the Member of Parliament for West Derbyshire collects what his government expects an unemployed person to live on. There'll be no invitations to lunch for Mr. Paris this week. Every meal will have to be planned, every purchase carefully considered. On his first day on the dole, Matthew Paris knows what it feels like to count the coppers. Mr. Paris is buying a whole week's food at once, a large jar of strawberry jam. He can afford tea, but not coffee as well. Sausages, liver, pilchards and eggs will be his main meals. Spaghetti, too, is cheap and filling. He can afford only one fresh vegetable, that's potatoes. We added three pounds to Matthew Paris's food bill to represent the many household goods he wouldn't need every week. Things like washing up liquid, soap powder and the like. Altogether it's come to 11 pounds and 10 pence, but he hopes not to come shopping again. Back in the flat, gas and electricity meters have to be fed before Mr. Paris can feed himself. The black and white TV too is on a meter. He's confident of making ends meet and has allocated three pounds out of his budget for savings. At the end of his first day on the dole, he spent £12.61, leaving £14.19 to last the next six days. Is it worth it? A new winter coat and shoes for the wife. 
The river which runs in front of Matthew Paris's new home is the traditional lifeblood of Tyneside. Only six years ago, shipbuilding on the river employed 18,000 men. Today, it provides jobs for less than half that number. Women and children soon will be shipbuilding. The decline has left a community bitter at what's seen as a betrayal by the government and more prosperous South. I think it's perhaps more comfortable for people to believe that the problems of Newcastle are caused by the heartlessness of Westminster politicians in London than to believe that the cause of their problems might be nothing to do with anybody's fault but something to do with things like the shipbuilding industry in Newcastle and the slow downward path on which it's been now for many years. I don't think that Westminster could forget the North. It's an enormous drain in terms of national resources but there still seems to be the feeling in the North that, that London doesn't know or doesn't care or doesn't understand. It's near the end of day two on the dole for Matthew Paris. The weather is cold and the meters are taking more money than he'd expected. 50 pence worth of gas has lasted only one day. The electricity needs another 50 pence and so does the television. As he settles down to a filling but unappetizing meal of barely warm pilchard pie and baked beans, Mr. Paris is beginning to experience the discomfort of life on supplementary benefit. At the end of the day, he spent £14.83 and has eleven ninety-seven to last for five days. I've never been to a football match before in England, and I was curious. Would it be an extravagance, I thought, on... 26 pounds odd a week to spend 2 pounds 50 going to watch the match. In a way, it is an extravagance. In another way, though, looking at the week that I had to spend, there was nothing to do all week apart from cook food and watch some television. That would be almost the only entertainment of the week, and it's perhaps not unreasonable to expect that somebody would want some kind of entertainment in the week. It might not be football. It might be bingo, it might be a club or something like that, but you have to pay for most things. And perhaps something on a Saturday afternoon is, is fair enough, even for somebody on the dole. But Matthew Paris's need to get out of the house has been expensive. Bus fares were 72 pence, match entrance was £2.50, and the very necessary hot drink at half-time was 20p. And even for the unemployed, Saturday night is still Saturday night. Evening. A pint of better, please. I decided, as with the football, that alcohol is a luxury. But it's a pretty small luxury. And uh, I think perhaps for many, quite an important one, when there isn't an awful lot of leisure activity that they can afford in the lives that they have to leave. I thought perhaps a pint or two pints of beer during the week was something worth trying to see whether I could fit it into the budget and not really an inordinate luxury. That's it. One clean. Oh, I'd love one, thanks very much. After only three days living on supplementary benefits, you found yourself at the end of the day in a pub accepting drinks from somebody you didn't know but who was working. I don't know whether you felt comfortable about that or not, but would you feel comfortable doing it after three months or three no. years? No, and that's something that I said to myself at the time. It's all very well accepting a drink. Um, I accepted a pint, then he offered another pint, and I decided just a half this time. One can do that once or twice, but you can't be accepting drinks all the time and not buying drinks. Isn't it a fact, though, that after a long period of being on the dole, you'd be more rather than less likely to go out to pubs and spend your money because you'd be more and more depressed and bored? Yes, that would be the great temptation. It would be something that would have to be resisted, but I can see would be hard for some people to resist. I know at 4 99 for £2, it's turning very cheap, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do with you. Give me a hand. 
Matthew Paris is looking for an extra pullover to keep out the Tyneside winter. He agreed to allocate two pounds as a contribution to longer term spending on clothes, and he's bargain hunting in Newcastle's Quayside market. Take the whole parcel off me, and instead of 20 or 17 or 16, pardon me sniffing, I won't even charge you a tenner for the whole lot. But the MP can't afford to be tempted. He's no spare cash for frills. Eventually, he finds what he's looking for. Well, 199. Can yeah. I have that, please, then? Yeah. I'll just put it in a bag for you. Thank you. It's day four of life on the dole for Matthew Paris. His food, if uninteresting, is lasting well. He's only just keeping warm by using gas sparingly and finds himself watching far more television than he'd expected to. When I decided to have the television, I thought it was a bit of a luxury. As the week's gone on, I find it less and less of a luxury. There isn't much else to do. There isn't much else that I can afford to do. And uh, I don't think that the black and white television, if it is a luxury, is a frivolous luxury anyway. By the end of day four, Mr. Paris's budget is getting stretched. He spent £23.97 and has just £2.83 to last for three days. By Monday, Matthew Paris is ready to test the prospects of a job. One of the few growth industries around Tyneside is tea and sympathy from support groups within the community. How do you do? How do you do? I'm uh, Matthew Paris. I'm in the area for a week or so. We encourage people to take. Harry Morgan has been a merchant seaman and a fitter on the oil rigs. He's been unemployed for four years and now works voluntarily at the family support group in Scotswood. Help each other in any way possible. That's morally and physically. Harry has been on his bike, looking for work all over Britain, but his most regular journey is the 36p bus ride into Newcastle to call at the job centre. There's just nothing here. Though more than three quarters of the region's 200,000 unemployed are unskilled, there isn't a single vacancy for an unskilled man advertised. When a job does go on the board, it's taken within minutes. Looking round the job centre with Harry and trying to think which of those jobs it might be worth his applying for, I hardly saw any. I saw one. There was a job for a part-time community worker. And uh, if he takes part-time work, it may in fact result in his losing his eligibility for the benefit that he gets at the moment. So it might cause a net loss to him and his family. You see that? Yeah. 35 pound, 10 a week. And me and married man with three kids. Mm. Well, that'd, be rid that'd be ridiculous. Back at the support group, Harry and the other volunteers spell out the realities of life on the dole for them. During the winter, if I've got no outside hobbies or interests, that means, and I've been out looking for my job and I'm despondent, and the snow's that deep on the ground, and I've got holes in my shoes, and I'm worried about my bus fare, I sit in the house. And do you know what happens when I sit in the house? I've got to have the heating on. So it's costing me more for being off work, and I'm using more energy up sitting in that house and drinking cups of tea and doing my nutting, than getting out and trying to do something about it. And if you have a grasp the fundamental that there is no work for you, but you still keep on trying, you still get out and try and try and try, and write and phone. After the way it does, it's like bloody shell shock. You know, it starts hitting you. And we're not sponges. Do you know something now? I feel bloody terrible when I draw that door money. I don't want to draw door money. I want work, mister. Mm. I've got a wife and three bands now at school. I want to be able to keep them. And I don't think there's anything wrong in that. But if I can't, I shouldn't be stigmatised. I shouldn't feel as if I'm hopeless, if I'm a dead loss, a dead beat. I don't think that life should be comfortable on the dole. I if that's the case, there will never be any incentive for industries to move or for people to move but to industries. I think industries. that's bloody facetious on your part. I think it's condescending and you're completely out of touch. Right. How can you say you want to make people uncomfortable on the dole when I'm on the sudden dole and my kids are there on the dole through no fault of their own? I don't want to make people no, uncomfortable you, you've, on the No, you've dole. stated, you stated, mm. you want to make it uncomfortable. Well, I tell you, mister, it is uncomfortable. Really? But it's uncomfortable in thousands of ways that you don't even know. But there's one thing. These kids won't work. So what do you want to do? What are you making it uncomfortable for? They want work. If you want to give them work, give them work. Not if you want to give the kids work, give them work. That's give me work, give him work, give him work, 
and give him work. Right now, don't you? But because we can't give you work, we're going to make it hard for you. I'm not saying that life is comfortable on the dole. It isn't. It's uncomfortable. Even in a week of trying it, I can see that it's uncomfortable. What I'm saying is that it's giving people jobs rather than giving people benefits that the state is about. It would suit a certain easy, facile political argument if I'd found in Harry the sort of Andy Cap working class stereotype, the lazy person who doesn't really want work and who is doing very nicely on social security. And I certainly haven't met such people in Newcastle and it's perhaps a little bit uncomfortable for me to realize that Harry and I believe most of the people whom he represents firstly are not particularly comfortable on social security and secondly really would like a job if only there was some hope of one. Doesn't that make your policy of life on the dole being uncomfortable as an incentive to get work at best irrelevant and at worst callous? I've certainly seen in this community whole groups of people about whom it would be quite unreasonable to say that many of them do ever have a chance of getting another job. Once we've isolated such people and once that's clear to us about them, if there was some way in which we could just help them without spreading the thing thinly over everybody, then I would be interested in doing it. With the chilly dawn of the sixth day on the dole for Matthew Paris comes harsh reality. He spent far more money than expected and realises he won't be able to save the three pounds he'd hoped to save. With two days heat and light to pay for, Mr Paris has just 61p to spend. Really cheap, about 125. What is that? It's chicken. Oh yes. That's what a Sunday's dinner. Yeah. You see we'll have a Sunday's dinner on there? Uh, every fortnight we'll have it on a Sunday. We'll have mm. a chip, one chicken and then next week we'll probably do with it. You know, we will have something but it'll not be as meat, there should be some porridge. So. If life on supplementary benefit is hard for a single man, Mr Paris accepts that it's harder for a man with a family. Jimmy Ellis has a wife and four children and has been unemployed for five years. He eats mostly eggs and beans so the children can eat reasonably. Well, I wouldn't give the kids eggs and beans every day or something, because you know, mm. they're supposed to have, as you say, vegetables and stuff like that. Yes, they need those besides. I would say looking at that diet, but it's quite a boring diet. But I would prefer to give them... You know, cook a real nice cooking meal, like a Sunday dinner every night. You know, but that's only once a fortnight, and that's all yeah. the time. You know, I couldn't afford it the following week because I don't have the money. Jimmy gets £26 a week family allowance and £50 for himself and his wife. While it's just enough to prevent the children going hungry, Jimmy would like their diet to be more nutritious. Well, I wouldn't say they were exactly well fed. I would say they could be slightly undernourished. You can tell that by the heights alone. Mm. You know, if you had the same type of kids from, say, anywhere, well, you'll find the kids are normally a lot bigger than they are in the northeast. You've seen that it's very difficult for Jimmy to feed his children properly. Are you prepared to concede that benefit for children ought to be raised in some circumstances? Yes. I do think that parents with small children to bring up especially deserve as much help as the state can give. And I do wonder whether the present child benefit ought to be given to everyone as it is at the moment. I'd rather like to see a change whereby, I know the word means testing is an unpopular one, but I don't think people that don't need the benefit should have it. And I think that people that do need the benefit ought to have more of it. So I'd like to increase the benefit for those that really need it and remove it from the rest. It's just something that I've never seriously thought about until this week, and this week has made me think about it. I've changed my mind in a number of ways. But I think when I started the week, I knew that life ought not to be easy on the dole. And as I finished the week, I realized that it bloody well isn't easy on the dole. Many of my supporters, and, and I too sometimes have been tempted towards the same view, have thought of people who are not working as almost lucky, as though they were doing quite all right and things were not too difficult for them. If I ever thought that was true, I realise now that it isn't so. I don't think one should feel any sense of either envy or of condescension towards those people who want jobs and can't get jobs and really feel no hope of ever getting jobs. 
I suppose the question this experience was asking me was, can you survive for a week on the dole? And I suppose the short and honest answer from my experience is that I didn't. How have you managed on £26.80? I may be 10 pence in the red or I may be 50 or 80 pence in the red. I'm trying to make one day's worth of gas spread over two days. So uh, I'm having the heater on either one bar instead of three or for some of the day not on at all. The lights are just about to go out, I should say, and I haven't got another 50 pence for this evening's electricity. So uh, I shall either have to go out this evening, and that means walking into town to see the lights, or else go to bed early. That would lead a number of people to the conclusion that the social security level is not high enough. Does it lead you to that conclusion? No. It leads me to the conclusion that the level of benefit is pretty low. But I've established to my own satisfaction that I can live without freezing and without starving and in a tolerable degree of comfort for a week, but without any frills at all, without any luxuries, and with almost nothing to do in my spare time. In other words, a pretty meagre, pretty threadbare existence. I acknowledge that, and at the same time, I believe that that is the right level for supplementary benefit. So you think that people who are without a job, often through no fault of their own, should still be expected to live what you've described as a threadbare existence with no luxuries at all? I think it depends what they have to look forward to. I think if one feels that there's some prospect to a job in the future and that this is just a period in between jobs, then it's tolerable. It's for those people who feel hopeless, who feel that they never will have another job in their life, who feel that this is going to be how it's going to be forever. It's for them that I'm not sure that things are quite right at the moment and if we could find some way of distinguishing those long-term and hopeless unemployed from the others, I would see a case for special help for them. Mine, I got a shop this morning. Knock at the door. I says, hi. He says, I'm from Little Woods. I says, God bless you. <laughs> I've won the treble chance. He says, no, your wife's up for shoplifting. <laughs> that evening, Matthew Paris sat in a working man's club, in debt after only one week, and unable to buy even a half a pint of beer. At home, the gas had gone out and the house was in darkness. I think what Maggie Thatcher should do is take a look at us and think, maybe there is something there. Maybe that these people are honest, hard-working people who really genuinely want jobs, who are looking for jobs. We don't want a new religion. We don't want promises and pie in the sky and everything's going to be right when we're dead. Give us a chance. Let us get the education to help ourselves. Give us some money so we can get jobs. And please don't punish us for being on the door.